Yes, welcome along to Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. And it is the last episode in the series. Yes, the Cheltenham Festival starts tomorrow. Gavin, it's, it's a happy day and it's a sad exactly, day. Exactly, yeah. It's great. I have mixed emotions. It's great in one way and uh, bad in the other, but it's great, yeah. We've Can't spent we? every week together since November. We have. How have you put up with me? Uh, just about. Yeah, just about. But, uh, no, right. good series. Uh, a personal highlight for me was um, in Leopardstown for the second day of the Dublin Racing Festival and uh, a few people came over saying they liked the show, but also a guy from England came over showed me a lot of his bets and he was proud of them and uh, he said that... Um, as he was walking away, I was standing beside Anne-Marie, and as he walked away, he goes, by the way, he says, I love the joke about the fridge. The fridge open? Open the fridge, yeah, when her face, face, face lit up. Face so. lit up, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yes, yeah, stuff like that's good fun, you know? Absolutely. Do, do you know what I love? What's that? And I also hate it as well. Every time I go to the races, people come up to me and say, how's Gavin? <laughs> I don't know if people know there's two people doing the show, because they all seem to love you. They must uh, think we're brothers or something. But, obviously, it's been a cracking series. We can't wait for the 2020 Chetland Festival. Thanks a million for watching, and don't forget, we'll be back next year as well. But... Just a small matter of the Cheltenham Festival to look forward to this year. So let's crack on with the show. So I'm sure you know the routine by now. We're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd. Yes, well, you, the viewer, gets to interact with myself and Gavin Lynch. And the first question this week comes in from Paul Power. And Paul wants to know who will win the Presbury Cup. And he just doesn't want to know that. He wants to know what the score is going to be, Gavin. Uh, I don't want to be uh, by strength, but I think Ireland are going to win it. Okay. Uh, last year it finished I think 14 all and Willie and Gordon weren't in brilliant form going into Cheltenham they're the two uh, leaders of the team um, whereas this year uh, I think there's like six shortish favourites say two to one or less and Ireland has five of them Wow. two on Tuesday three on Wednesday um, so I think I think Ireland will probably just shade it yeah and just to add to your theory uh, when the ground has been soft at Cheltenham officially soft I think it's only been officially soft the festival has only started on officially soft ground five times since 1995 and Willie Mullins has won the Supreme on four of, the, four of those five occasions okay. and Ireland on officially soft ground or worse have won 80% of hurdle races really mm, which is very interesting yeah um, although the ground has been very soft in England this winter as well but I'd say maybe 16-12 to Ireland what do you think yeah I was thinking a tiny bit closer maybe 15-13 okay 15, 13 to Ireland for me. So there you go, Paul. We're both in the Irish camp. Next question comes in from Kevin Smith. And he wants to know about the champion chase. Unfortunately, not good news about Altior on Sunday morning. He's lame, but fingers crossed. Say a prayer that he'll make the race. And what Kevin wants to know is what horse will lead over the second fence in the Queen Mother champion chase. So this is a good question because anything could lead over the first. Yes. But they're gradually getting into a rhythm for the second. So basically, who's going to make the run in Gavin? Can I answer? You go. Politolog. Yeah, really? convinced Politolog. I think Paul Nichols kind of senses things and he could get an easy lead. And I think Politolog is best when he's just allowed to flow. I'd so I think Politolog will lead over the and second And Shaq and Persuas is going to be up there too, isn't mm. he? I'd say so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, like I back Shaq and Persuas, but I'm just, I'm raging. I just pray Altior gets there. Yeah. Because don't mind money. This is more than money, I'd say. It would just be the race of the year, wouldn't and it? If the three of them got there, like I'd be it great. is. I hope he gets there. Fantastic. Yeah. So hopefully Altior gets there. But do you agree with me? Politolog will lead over the second Yeah, event? sure. It's tricky, but yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he could be a place angle in the race. Politolog. Next question comes in from David Thompson. Oh, and David wants to know a lucky 15, Gavin. He wants both myself and yourself to select a lucky 15 for the festival. Okay. I've actually... Go for it. I've two each way lucky 15s, yeah. But just before we do that, I forgot to say it last week. Um, I missed the Pat Smullen day in the Curra last year. I just couldn't make it on the day and I felt very guilty. I never contributed. Uh, my mum passed away uh, through cancer. So uh, this week, because uh, of Cheltenham, I'm going to log on to Pat's website. It's cancertrials.ie. I'm going to donate a few quid and if, if we have a good week, sure, we'll make it decent. Gavin, I didn't think I could love you anymore. But uh, it's just that's a beautiful gesture. Ah, yeah, but if anybody has a good week, maybe throw Absolutely, a few quid yeah. in as well. Great so the cause. two each way lucky 15s, one I've gone for is Bill Away at 11 to 2. I like the way you're thinking of five to one. Still fancy him at that price. Itchy feet, your horse at nine to two. Stealing one of mine. I think you never feet. even asked me. I'm mean, not allowed. Stole him off you. Do you yeah, own you him? Do you? Go, on, go for. It. And Facker do three at four to one. So I think those have all got very very strong each way chances. Okay. And the second one is a bit bigger prices. Damned the company in the Carl Cup of tens. Mick Pastor at eights in the Boodles. A Phoenix Way or Relegate. I've tipped up the two of them. So one of those, whichever no, you well, like. No, you better pick one. Uh, Phoenix Way okay. and Aramon in the County Hurdle. So. Oh, I thought and you were going to say Aramax there. <laughs> and even if you get, even if you don't get many winners, if they get placed, you'll still win money. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to keep it simple. Just a lucky 15 for me. I'm going to go for Aramax in the Boodles. Okay. I'm going to go for Hold the Note 
in the Northern Trust Novices Handicap Chase. I'm going to go for Epitant in the champion hurdle. Yeah. I think she's the only improver in the race. Okay. And I'm going to finish it off with Goshen in the Triumph hurdle. Yeah, the more the You're race, the more look at the race, the closer it's getting, I think Goshen could be a freak. So there are he those. Some are engine, he? he does have some engine. Yeah. Yes. So there you go. Two lucky teams from Gavin and one from myself. And the final question this week comes in from Joe Holden. And Joe wants to know, give me one horse who you think will win at the 2021 Cheltenham Festival and in what race? So Gavin, we haven't even started this year. I'm going to give Festival, you a Trixie. But he wants to know what's going to win next year. I'm going to give you a Trixie. Get three of them. Go for it. I'm going to go for Bob Ollinger, I think is how you pronounce it. The horse that won on Saturday in Goran Park in the bumper. Rob Core horse, yeah. Yeah, it, um, it was a two mile two bumper. To me, he just looked a potential star. So I think I'd select him for the Ballymore next year. Okay. Uh, unless appreciated both. We'll give you a 66s, yeah, okay. Well, you'd want 20s, wouldn't you? You certainly would. Uh, Envoy Allen uh, for the Marsh Chase. Straight over fences. Yeah. No messing around. I think so. Hurdle. And I think no. he won't go off the RSA. I'd say he'll go off the marsh. Okay. And the third one is absolute tired in the Ryanair because even if Min, who's a nine year old, beats it this year, it won't beat it next year. Okay. There that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I was going to chance my arm and go for like something in bumpers that's not turning up at Cheltenham. Okay. But I'm not. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say Shishkin will win the 2021 race in Post Arco. Okay. There you go, Shishkin. Yeah. Similar sort of here. And that was this week's final questions from the crowd. So, up in the anti viewers. The decks are in for day one of the 2020 Cheltenham Festival and myself and Gavin are going to dissect all seven races just for your pleasure. The opening race on Tuesday is the Supreme Novices Hurdle. It's at half one and we are going to hear that famous roar. And the favourite at the moment with Bet365 is Shishkin at 11 to 4. Asteria for Lange is 3 to 1. Abercadabra is 5 to 1. Fiddler on the Roof is 6 to 1. 7 to 1 Chantry House. 14 to 1 Captain Guinness. 16 to 1 Edward Stone. And it's 20 to 1 Bar Gavin. A fright, frighteningly difficult start to the yes. festival. Uh, I think it's a long week. There's 28 races. I tread carefully in this race. Oh. I think there's four races that are very, very difficult to have a punt in, personally speaking. The RSA, the Triumph, the Champion Chase, Valtier runs, and this one. I think it's really tough. So people are after typing in up in the ante. Episode know, 19, the hard. last one of the series. I want to see what Gavin Lynch's fancies in the first race, the most important race that sets the tone for the whole week. What does he fancy? What does he fancy? He fancies nothing. Too hard. Shishkin uh, is the right favourite if I had to pick one him. And Captain Guinness that I've tipped up definitely has an each way chance mm. if he settles better, which I think he will. A steering for launch is probably going to make the run, would you agree? Yeah. Um, but there's like, there's 16 in it. Mm. The one I, I actually personally wouldn't just be mad on a stereo for long. I think the race fell apart a little bit. At okay. Leopard Sound, Mount Leinster has been disappointing since it's he just was he's trained by that man. Yeah, and that man, as I said already, Supreme Novice Hurdle mm. since 1995 has been run on soft ground five times and Willie Mullins has won four of them. Mm. So that's... And has won it a few times from the front as we yeah, know. So. Absolutely. So, you know, you have to take that into consideration. I think Shishkin is the fastest of these. I think he's got a real turn of foot. And obviously he's won over two mile three, which is a mm. huge help because you definitely need to stay. Yeah. They're going to go a million miles an hour. Keep an eye on the time afterwards as well. Is it 3.50, 3.55? That'll tell you what kind of ground it is mm. as well. Okay, so if all the horses were the same price, we'd both be back in Shishkin. I'd say so, yeah. yeah. I think he's just about the most likely I think it. Captain Guinness is small and one at a massive price I've said in a few preview nights Sovia Pimpernel he's only rated 142 they're going for this race instead of the, of the county hurdle I think he's a good horse and he's got form tied in with some decent horses like Kel Destan Torpedo from, from Cheltenham early on the year at a massive price I think Sovia Pimpernel will run and another one at a massive price is All Art or All Art mm. um, has could, be both anything. Up, could be anything he's both up the last twice in ordinary enough races but he's I think 20-25 to 1 so it's a class race excellent so Shishkin for me and Gavin, a uh, big price one for me is Sophie Pimpernel and yours is Allard. Or um, Captain You're Guinness. going again? Oh, no, 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 just oh, yeah, Captain yeah, Guinness. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So Shishkin, lukewarm and Shishkin from both of us. Second race on day one is, of course, the Racing Post Arkel. And what a race we have in store at the moment with Bet365. Notebook is the 5-2 to two favourite. Fakir Dare is next in the market at 4-1. to one. It's 5-1 to one cash back. 11-2 brewing up a storm. Moira Banrig is 10-1. to one. Global Citizen is 12-1. to one. Rouge Vif 14-1. to one. Esprit de Large is 14-1. to one. And it is 16-1. to one. Al Dancer 20-1 bar. Doesn't get any easier, Gavin. No, uh, another tough race. Personally, I like Fakir Dare each way at 4-1. to one. Um, I'd be very keen to watch a notebook and cashback on the way down to the start, how they behave in the parade ring. Obviously, notebook uh, got too excited in Leopardstown, kind of ran away, ran away with Rachel a little bit. Cashback is a lively sort, we'll call him. 
Um, so you'd have to keep an eye on them down at the start. But I think Fakir Duderi, the tactics weren't great, I thought, at Christmas. He's had a fresh run. Uh, he's only had the three runs over fences. He's had a break. No pucks had four runs. He jumps amazing. He definitely stays because he won the more. So for me, uh, if I could do the reach way. Yeah, you've made very valid points there. I think he's the most likely winner. Yeah. I think he's, you know, he's such a good jumper and he's he's battle hardened. He's young, but he's battle hardened. Like he was at Cheltenham last year in the Supreme. He went to Aintree. And I like the way you said already in the series that he's been fresh enough for this. Hasn't run for a while. Yeah, I like that. Mm. I just pray they don't go too fast and then they're all tired at the last and something comes from behind. Well, I think I found something that could come from behind okay. and do them. Even though... The team have said that they're going to ride him more promptly, but I think Al Dancer at 16 to 1 is a big yeah. price here. He's been running small fields all year, but if you go back to his hurdle form, he could just be a little bit better in bigger fields. I think he'll get a nice. This is the first race, probably this season, that they're going to go a proper end to end gallop. Yeah. And I think that's really going to suit Al Dancer. 16 to 1, bet 365. For me, that's the value but of the race. But is he going to throw the toys out of the pram a half a furlong out, is he? But sure, maybe he will, Gavin, but he's 16 to 1. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's a big chance, price. Yeah. 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 Yeah, hopefully he'll only just throw out the rattler or something and still win. <laughs> so it's Al Lanza for me at 16 to 1 and your Fakir de Darius. Yep, each way, yeah. Excellent. Moving on to race three. It is the Ultima Handicap Chase. And Vindication is bet 365. Six to 1 favours. Mr. Malarkey is 8 to 1. 8 to 1 Discorama. 8 to 1 Kill the Start. 8 to 1 Who Dares Wins. 9 to 1 The Conditional. And it's 14 to 1 Bar. I have a nice big price one here. Okay. Got to flex uh, my muscles. <laughs> Vindication brings a lot of class to the race. I was going to tell them what it is. Okay, go on. Can, will you let me? Yeah, will you? Yeah, okay. Just can't, can't. Okay. Right, uh, it is Cipage. 20 to 1, bet 365. I think... Will he stay? Well, uh, that's what we don't know. Okay. But I just wonder, all season, as Venetia said to herself, we've well, got a three-mile chaser here. Let's just wait until the Cheltenham Festival to unleash him over three miles. Keep his mark in the mid-150s and just see how we go. Okay. The form against Riders in the Storm, when he was given Riders in the Storm £7 at Aintree from earlier on the season, looks spectacularly good mm. now. And I think the ground will be perfect. He's got great Cheltenham form. And to me, Cipage of 155 could just be a greatest three-mile chaser. And I think he's unexposed compared to a lot of them. So, so it's worth taking the chance at the price that he does there. Yes, Cipage for me, 20 to 1, Betri 65, get on. Okay. There you go. Right, Gavin, your turn. <laughs> uh, vindication brings a lot of class to the race. Uh, ran well uh, last year in what was the JLT, now the Marsh. 159 now. Yeah, the only thing is, I, I'd say he's definitely... Uh, that's not... The biggest, uh, say, problem is the going left-handed. To me, when he ran in the JLT last year, he jumped out to his right. Mm -hmm. And he's got great form going the other way around in Ascot and stuff. So to me, that's a bit of a negative. Uh, I'm going for who dares wins belonging to Alan King. I've mentioned him on the show last week. Uh, he's rated, I think, 147. Mm -hmm. His three runs over fence have been in 2-2 two, two to 2.5. Two I think he's crying out for a step up and trip because he was a stare on the fat and he was a decent stare. The horse the North is actually crying. Yeah, don't know. Um, but I think he's got... Definitely got a strong each way chance at yeah. uh, what is he eight or ten to one? Yeah, he's an eight to one shot with Betty six five. I like the way you're thinking with that one. I just think he's a chance as well. Value probably a little bit gone. Have you got bigger price than that? Uh, I did. Yeah, small what, bit. What price you? Ah, fourteen. No, fourteen. That's all right, Gavin. He's yeah. eight to one now. He'd, He'd have a chance. Swept up all the. He value. jumps well. He's an honest horse. He stays galloping. He's ran well before in Coral Cups and stuff. So he likes Cheltenham. And Alan King has won the race with. I'm I asked you this week. question last week. Now, come on, uh, come I, on. I know the horse. It's only seven days ago. Give me the ago. first letter. B. Ben. Ben something. Salem. Ben Salem. Ben Salem. I'm getting Thanks. old. You are getting, well, you're not getting that old. Okay, so who dares wins for Gavin and Seapage for me in the ultimate handicap chase. Now, moving on to the big one. 3.30 on Tuesday. It is the champion hurdle. And Gavin, I've been at so many preview nights where everybody has said this is the worst champion hurdle of all time. It's just a mess of a race. It's so bad it shouldn't even be ran, but we're going to have to dissect this at the moment. Epitant is Bet365's three, 3 to 1 favourite. Penton Hills 9 to 2. Silas Emery 5 to 1. Sharjah 9 to 1. Darver Star 10 to 1. Mm. 12 to 1 bar. Well, I have looked at this race so many times over the last week or two, and I keep coming up with different conclusions, but I've come to a final right. conclusion. Okay. 24 uh, hours to go. What is yes, it? I'm. Well, I have backed a, uh, a while ago, but I'm going to back her, her again. So that'll give you Beautiful. a clue. Beautiful. I'm going to back right. Epitant. She right. gets the seven pound, which you cannot, cannot forget about. She was wicked impressive in Newbury, even more impressive at Christmas uh, in Kempton. She's the only one, as you have kept saying many times, that she's the only one that could maybe win two champion hurdles, for example. Or three. Um, yeah. I just, 
the rest of them are so ordinary. Celius Emery has as good an engine probably, but this thing come back from fences, uh, it's jumping in Gorham Park wasn't great. Now we could improve his jumping a good bit, but I'd want to improve it a lot. Okay. Uh, Pentland Hill is a brilliant jumper, brilliant traveller, but he's just a weak finisher. Mm. I could just, yeah, I'm going back Hefton. And I think we saw at, uh, at Newbury and at Kempton with Epiton that she sees out her races, she hits the line hard, she's not just a bridal merchant. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I just, the more I look at the race, the more I say to myself, people are saying it's a bad race, but we could see something a little I bit I could special. see Darver Star run a very good race because they, yeah, go, they are going to go very fast, right? And Darver Star has won over two and a half a couple I of know, times. But like, I'd so love I could see to him see it. On. Like, you know, a lovely partnership for that owned the horse and mm -hmm. loud. Mm -hmm. It is a fantastic story. But Gavin Cromwell would want to be some trainer to get Darver Star yeah, to win a champion. Heart. He would. Ran off 104 at Wexford. <laughs> the thing about Epitant, I think that, you know, uh, a week or 10 days ago, Nikki said that she coughed once. I don't see that as a big deal. It's fine. Obviously, last year she ran bad in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, which is a deal. I know you dismiss it, but uh, they were saying about the flu jabs. Flu jabs, a few niggly problems. They've, they've sorted them. And she hasn't, her best performance have been on flat tracks, but I think at around 7 to 2, 3 to 1, I think she's good value. So we're agreeing. Yep. Excellent. Both yeah. of us agree Epitant is going to win the 2020 Champion Hurdle. And at 4.10 on Tuesday, of course, we have an extra bit of spice. Usually after the Champion Hurdle, it's downhill. You go to the bar, you get yourself a few points, a few handicaps to come, but not this year. Yes, the Mayor's Hurdle is a proper grade one. And it is the showdown, potentially, of the entire meeting without the champion chase, maybe. Mm -hmm. It is. Benny to do is your 8-11 to favourite. Honeysuckle, 5-2. to two. Roxana is 8-1. to one. Stormy Ireland, 10-1. to one. And 20-1 to one bar. 8-11, to 11, Benny to do. Honeysuckle, 5-2 with Bet365. Are the prices correct, Gavin? Not really. Now, I do fan I'm going to contradict myself here. I fancy Benny to do, uh, but Honeysuckle shouldn't be 5-2. to two. That's a contradiction. If you have 100 quid each way at 5-2, right, and she finishes second or third, well then, you either lose 50 quid, and if she wins the way, race, you win 300. Like, 5-2 to two is way too big of a price. And also to note, the last twice she ran at Fairy House and also at Leprestown, in the last 5-10 minutes on Betfair, she was incredibly strong. So I could see her getting very well punted on the day. Okay, what price are these two going to go off? I'd say 10-9 to nine on and 7-4 to four maybe, I don't know. Okay, interesting, yeah. And four to five and seven to four, four to five, two to one. And you think Benny is just a little bit better? I do. The the ratings have her uh, four pounds ahead. She's eight from nine since she joined Willie, apart from last year. We all know what happened. And then uh, Honeysuckle is seven from seven. The only thing I'll say in Honeysuckle's favour is I don't think Benny Dejew would be quick enough to win an Irish champion hurdle. Okay. So, Interesting, yeah. And if there was no, if the Mayor's hurdle last week was cancelled, Honeysuckle would have went to the champion hurdle and Benny Dejew would have went to the stairs. So that tells you... Valid argument, yeah. Uh, Honeysuckle's has more gears, but at the same time, the other lady is class. I think Stormy Ireland is going to be third. If there's yeah. Beckham without two, oh, I, I was just going to say it. Like you could get, she's fourth favourite, I think, at yeah. the moment. So you could get two to one without two. Yeah. That's a good price. And I'm tempted, I fancy Benny, and I'm tempted just to take on Honeysuckle. I'm tempted to have a small few quid on Stormy Ireland without Benny to do. And like the key thing is, right, Stormy Ireland is written by Robbie Power, right? Yes. And they know that Benny to do stays, mm -hmm. properly stays. He's going to go quick, I think, on yeah, Stormy Ireland. Run, won't she? She'll make the run and she's a good jumper. She's better this year. She's not that far behind in ratings. She's only £5, I think, yeah, behind. Not that far behind. I think she's the one that will surprise people, but I think Benny Dudu will just outclass She'd her. be a bet now without the two favourites, yeah. a two to one or whatever price yeah, she'd be. Yeah. Wouldn't she's, she? she's lovely to watch as well. I just goes on and gets on with things. I'd say Honeysuckle could trade favour turning in, but I'd say Benny will just outstay her. Okay, there we go. That's an in depth analysis of the Mayor's Hurdle at 410. And at 450, it is the Northern Trust Novices Handicap Chase. Actually, one of my favourite races of the entire meeting I absolutely love it that's because you've had a couple of winners Bally Alton won it was uh, absolutely glorious so 450 Gavin at the moment Imperial Aura Paul Keeley's big fancy yeah. of the whole entire Cheltenham Festival is 9 to Petri 65 Galvin just one letter away from your name Gavin is uh, 6 to 1 Hold the Note is 8 to 1 8 to 1 Trainwreck and 12 to 1 Bar tricky uh, as all these handicaps are Imperial good race, Aura good strong yeah Kind of like a great race, yeah. Yeah, uh, not 145, say a grade yeah. two or something. Mm. Uh, there's only, I think, six pounds top to bottom, as usual. Uh, Imperial R is the right favourite. I went for Galvin, it was a big price. I think it's only, what is it? Well six done. Eight one now. Um, but Currently, no, Galvin only... is six to one with Petri 65. Yeah, you just have a tiny worry. Imperial R is a better jumper maybe than Galvin. If Galvin's jumping holds up, he'd have a, a very good chance. Train wreck must have a chance. It was against the more uh, senior horses the last day. Any second, I was third who has won since. One thing to note about Imperial Laura's race the last day, the horse uh, who won it was simply the bets, third was on the slopes, the three of them could win three different races at Cheltenham. 
simply the bets going to Brown Advisory, Imperial Aura here, and on the slopes, the Grand Annual. So, what price will you give me the win? None. Don't know. Yeah, okay. Just <laughs> probably, saying, there's probably, a chance to win none as well. Yeah, it's probably threes on or twos on, okay. they'll win none. Okay. You know? okay, but your choice in the race is? Just about Galvin, but I just. Don't know if I can fully trust this jumping yet. Any particular reason you haven't mentioned the winner yet? No. No. Okay, it is Hold the Note for me. Johnny Burke, Mick Shannon, Hold the Note, I think is the classiest horse in the race, straight at 145. His mark suggests he's the best horse in the race. I think he is. I think that race at Warwick over three miles would bring him on a ton. He's a good jumper. Travel great that day. Travel great, yeah. proven horse. Hold the note. And there's still some value there. Like I'm surprised he's still eight to one bet three six five. I think he'd go off a little bit shorter. But it's a tough race. It is a tough race. But hold it over for me and... Uh, Galvin, you won't get as an impressive winner as last year anyway, that's for sure. No, you certainly won't. That was at Plutar. And the final race on the card. And I have to say, Galvin, it's a bit of a damn squib to finish the card. It is the National Hunt Chase. And at the moment, carefully selected as Bet365, 6-4 favourites. Raven Hill is 9-2. Lord de Manil is 7-1. Forza Milan, 7-1. 8-1 bar. Galvin, I'm going to just say it. This is atrocious stuff. It's, it's the worst race of the week. It's a race I usually would have looked forward to. And you think Native River couldn't even win it a few years ago. Yeah. And then you're seeing the likes of... I'm not even going to say some of the names that are in this race. It's really poor. It's not good. No. Now, just to say that Lord of Manil is 153, uh, officially carefully selected as 152, but I, that's not really... Now, it's a bit unlucky, as in... Probably you could have Copperhead, you could have Champagne Classic. Yeah. You know, it's a bit unlucky, it's not a if better If you had race. those two now, it would be a brilliant race. Yeah, but, but it's not. Carefully selected, in my head, he's kind of around maybe eight pounds clear in my head. Um, so that entitles him, I think, to three or four small mistakes and still win. Yeah. I think he'll drift to out, what is he, six to four? Will he drift? It's such a bad no, race. No, but Will I think he, he could touch two to one in the morning. You know the way the book is yeah, like to push out yeah. horses. But I'd say he'll SP five to four. Yeah. It's Patrick gets him into a rhythm. He's supposed to have jumped very well, according yeah. to the reports the other day in Navin. Uh, his jumping like one thing you have to remember and people don't uh, think of this is that the last day uh, when he won a nace he gave Forrest Milan six pound and beat mm -hmm. it right but it was only two weeks after its previous exactly. run and Willie never does and that and the needs to get him qualified but they had to yeah, yeah. so he's had a little bit of a break he's never been out of the first three he was third in the grade one uh, at Punchetown without with jumping Hall. well that day either yeah, yeah. Manella Indo and all that so he's got a huge engine yeah I just think he wins I think he's not a great jumper but I don't think he'll have to be to win this it's Worst renewal of the race I've seen for a long time. Yeah, and he will stay, I think. Okay, so it is two confident votes for carefully selected in the finale on Tuesday. All that's left to do now is reveal our best bet on Tuesday. Gavin Lynch? Best bet on Tuesday. I wasn't expecting that. Fakir Dudari each way. Fakir Dudari is in the race in post circle. And I'm going to go for hold the note in the Northern Trust Novice Handicap Chase. Now, open the anti-viewers, it is time for our final anti-post picks for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. Yes, me and Gavin are just going to add one more to our list of fancies for the next couple of days. And Gavin, I'm going for one in the county hurdle. So am I. You're going well, for one in the county hurdle? I am, yeah. So you go first because you won't be first on Friday. Oh, boom, 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 boom. fight and talk. Okay, I'm going to go for the top weight, El Dorado Allen, trained by Colin Tizard, ridden by Robbie Puppy Power, off a mark of 150. I'm just thinking maybe class will prevail here. He's had a light campaign, looked like he was going to be a supreme horse last year, got injured after a fall at, uh, at, at Aintree, was very impressive first time out at Sandown, and I loved his comeback run at Sandown this year. They went a hell of a clip, tottered down, went way off out in front, and I just liked the way... El Dorado Allen got himself into contention. And uh, to me, I thought that run screamed county hurdle or okay. big handicap. He's gone from mark of 150, 152 down to 150. Top weights have won this race. Mm -hmm. Arctic Fire won it yep. a couple of years ago off top weight. He was off 156 that day. El Dorado Allen is only off 150. He's just a type of horse I could see turned into a grade one horse in years to come. And I'm hoping class will prevail with El Dorado Allen 20 to 1. With Bet365 for the County Hurdle on Friday. I hope that class prevails, but almost the top class. Uh, Aramon, second top weight of 149, getting a pound off your lad. Uh, was a grade one winner at Christmas Day last year. Uh, ran very good race against Classical, Classical Dream. Dream. Ran very well at, ran okay in the Supreme. Ground was a bit too soft for maybe. Ran okay at Aintree. Two runs this season at Christmas when Willies weren't maybe fully fit. Uh, finished fifth in the Irish Champion Hurdle, only beaten I think eight and a half lengths. Um, it looks like the ground's going to start say, soft, good to soft. Uh, Simon Clay said that the ground on the new track generally rides quicker, which is good news for Armand because the better the ground, the better his chance. But to me, he's far better than a handicapper. If the ground came out, say, good to soft on the Friday, 
Uh, you guys have a great chance. Okay, what price are we talking about? 10 to 1. 10 to 1, Araman in the county hurdle. Yep. Okay, we do a reverse forecast? Maybe. No, no, <laughs> wouldn't advise that, certainly not. So I'm taking on Gavin with El Dorado Allen, and his choice is Araman in the county hurdle on Friday. Now, before we let you go, we're going to have a long look at all of our anti post picks for the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. Some of them are gone, some of them are a lot shorter than they were tipped at the time. And overall, Gavin, I think it's quite a good performance from both of us. Ah, I think yes, we should go into Chetland with our heads held high. Yes, it's an 8 out of 10, I suppose, anyway. Yeah, um, I think so. Uh, the thing about anti-post is you're going to get injuries, you're going to get horses missing and going for different races. That's just the nature of the beast. Running shite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, that's the big problem usually, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, so you can't be whinging if, you know, I tipped up... Uh, a gypsy Island, and the following day, oh, she... Yeah, uh, you're going on about this for us. <laughs> get over it. That was months but, ago. It was. Yeah. But just to give you an example, so She would have won, of course she would have won. Uh, but sometimes you back a horse and you don't even get 24 hours no, out of it. you don't. But then you get good prices and, you know, it's a mixed okay, bag. So, up in the end of years, you can see our prices and our tips going uh, up and over and back here on the screen. And that'll tell you the prices that the horses were tipped up at and the prices they are now. Um, I suppose... Just to talk about a few, I suppose Itchy Feet was one of mine that I was yeah. kind of proud of. 20 to 1 after winning a three runner race at Leicester. Liked what I saw there. Now, favourite for the marsh and should take a bit of beating. He should. Uh, Mr. Fisher maybe is a danger. It looks like Aloha is going to the RSA, mm -hmm. but to me, Itchy Feet looks the winner, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sharage, obviously 33 to 1 for the, for the champion hurdle. Mightn't be good enough, but valued. Yeah, it, it was a big drifter the last day in Leopardstown. Um, that wasn't its run in no way. No. Uh, so. Soft brown, Cheltenham, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to know. The storyteller, 16 to 1, tipped up here for the Pretemps final. Sno sneaked into six in the qualifier, the same position as Sire de Berlay. Happy with him. Yeah, has to have a good chance. He's, what is he, off one, the high 140s, whereas uh, Chase rating is the high 150s, so mm. he'd have to have a good and chance. And just two of mine that I tipped up. Uh, front view to win any race at 14 to 1. Looks a good price now because he's a leading fancy for the Martin Pipe. John Joe Neal Jr. booked. And Lisp. 14 to 1 to win any race as well, a leading fancy for the Grand Annual. And Breland Das, don't forget Breland Das. I think he's got a cracking chance at 33 to 1 tipped up here in the Grand Annual as well. Gavin, your list is it's singing to me. Well, it's not too bad, yeah. You were getting um, a lot of love on Twitter. There's people that are tweeting me all the time wondering when is Gavin going to go on Twitter, right? And somebody actually replied to the tweet and goes, Gavin doesn't have time to go on Twitter. Uh, no. Gavin is too busy studying yeah. racing. I couldn't be listening to people giving out to me. Okay, well, uh, you're getting a lot of love. But uh, appreciate it and end by Alan. And appreciate it 14 to 1. That was a pick and a half. Yeah, I suppose what turned people off was that it was a two and a half mile bumper first time out, but it had good gears. And you sure. were getting the stopwatch out and you were saying yeah. he was this he was Ahead of Advic Davros yeah. and all those, yeah. So yeah. Um, that seems like literally months and months and months does, ago. Yeah. But uh absolute tired in the Ryanair and things like that. Yeah. 16 to 1 for the Ryanair absolute tar, Gavin Lynch. Well, men, it has well, to be him too. To so. one, like, you, know, so <laughs> you bet me there. But um, um, I look at we've some value got, but it could be a long week. Hopefully, we get a few winners. And just to tell viewers, um, Open the Ante starts in November. Gavin was thinking about Up in the Ante in the beaming sun while it was actually probably raining in Galway. A horse called I like the way you're thinking. You rang a buddy. No, a fella rang me after the race. Oh, he sorry, goes, well, you, 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 does it make no, any difference? You I'm can just, just say that you rang him just for the purpose of the <laughs> sorry. story. Right, but buddy he rang you. Yeah, and he just said, Geez, that was wicked impressive. Where do you think he'll end up? And uh, that was on the Wednesday. He, he also won the weekend that in Galway. But I just happened to say it to him. He said, I could see him running the Martin Pipe next March. So mm. uh, It looks like he's going there anyway. It does. So that was July? Uh, the end of July, yeah. July. So up in the ante started in July. Imagine Which that. we That's never, when this man starts thinking about Cheltenham. We never forget about Cheltenham. You're always thinking about it. No, absolutely. The Derby's all in Epsom. You're wondering what's going to win the Supreme. <laughs> That's just the way Cheltenham is. But I like the way you're thinking. Like that 25 to 1 to win any race. That was, has to have a good chance. That was one of your finest moments. Um, it ran a lovely race at Christmas. I think it was fourth. Uh, wasn't totally knocked about. Two very good wins uh, in Galway. Definitely stays. Yeah, so I'll be happy with him. As a pal of mine says to me, sure, it doesn't win it matter if the winner lose now. So you got the value. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it does, though. It does. So I'm going to ask you now, your best tip was what? The one, you, the one you were proudest of? Uh, I'd say I'd probably appreciate it for the bumper. Uh, doing the hand timings and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it'll be a long Wednesday night watching Liverpool against Atletico Madrid if he gets beat. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to go for itchy feet. I'm going to have to go for itchy feet. Hopefully he'll come good and give Ollie Murphy, if he hasn't had it by then, his first Cheltenham Festival winner. Gavin, you know what? Is that it? That's it, Gavin. Well, lastly, I want to wish you best luck next month. Oh, what's happening uh, next month? I actually know what's happening. Having a baba? Yeah. Uh, so you're... Well, Aoife is doing all the hard work now. She used to push it out. You're a good, you're a good golfer. 
You're a very good goalie. You're a brilliant journalist, brilliant tipster, but you'll be a better dad. So, best luck with that. What a gent. What a gent he and is. you will. You're, you're made to be a dad. You'll be super. Well, I have to say, the last couple of months have been an absolute pleasure working for this man. Up in the ante viewers know that you're the shrewdest of them all, Gavin. It's been a pleasure for both of us to bring you up in the ante over the last couple of months. We've enjoyed every single second of it. Enjoy every single race. And just point. remember, it's a long week. Gavin, that just, was, that was going perfectly. But just don't go too mad the first day, that's all. Right. It's a long week. Do you know what I was going to say before Keep I left? Do you know what I was going to say? Oh, I was going to say to people, I was going to go, <laughs> Gavin, if you were to give punters one last piece of yep. advice, but instead you cut me off. So well, if you were to give punters one last piece of advice, Gavin, what would it be? Um, don't drink vodka and no, iron give brew. give the other one. <laughs> Uh, just go handy. Don't lose it all the first day. Yeah, it's a long week. Yeah, absolutely. Don't forget, gamble responsibly. Only bet what you can afford to lose and enjoy the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. I've been David Jennings. He's been Gavin Lynch. For one last time, that was up in the ante. <laughs>